So one of the things that we are learning about this full-time RV living and traveling lifestyle is that you sort of have to learn to embrace the detours and the disruptions. Today's disruption is, well, we tried to take our chappy over to an RV park and set it up and level it. And one of our front jacks bound up and locked. It only raised the rig about two inches and it would not go any further. I tried to adjust it manually using a wrench as per the uh, owner's manual, but I really had no luck. And then actually we ended up hitching it back up to the truck. And as we were lifting the weight off of the front jacks, that driver's side front jack actually slipped a couple of inches under the weight of the coach. And obviously that's extremely dangerous. We can't set up the coach. Even if we could get it level, we can't trust it on something like that that's gonna strip out and slip like that. So <sighs> luckily we were already hitched up to our truck. So we actually ended up just pulling away from that RV park and going and crashing at a friend's house, which later actually turned out uh, we ended up moving over to Jenna's grandma's house in Hemet, California, because we were heading back to California for Thanksgiving anyway. But what we sort of ended up doing was we found uh, one of her friends that had some property where we could park the truck and the trailer and leave it set up while we stayed with grandma and had uh, some parts ordered and delivered to her house so that we can fix it. You can me struggling taking the plastic off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and replace that front driver's side jack. And if all goes well, I'm gonna teach you guys how to replace the other jack. <laughs> so stick with us if you wanna see how to replace a front landing gear jack from a Lippert Ground Control 3.0. And this is one of the biggest, baddest automated leveling systems around. And I can't believe there are zero videos on how to replace these front jacks. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to do it myself. And if all goes well, I'll show you guys how to do it. So obviously being here was not our plan, but uh, it was someone's plan. Uh, we, we try our best to follow, you know, God's calling on our lives and he placed this disruption in our path for a reason. And it's been really awesome staying with grandma. Um, I know that staying with her has really been a blessing to us and we've tried to be a blessing to her as well. Um, but it's been nice having some childcare so Jen and I could go on a few dates. So anyway, so that, I guess that's what all I'm trying to say is like when you're doing this lifestyle and something like this comes, it'd be really easy for us to look at the negative and be like, oh man, we got to spend money on parts. Oh man, we made this reservation that we now can't fulfill. Oh man, now we're not where we want to be. Um, but, you know, God's lined up all these little um, situations for us to kind of go through and it, while it may cost us a little bit more money in spare parts, um, we've gotten to experience some adventure that we hadn't planned on and that's been a real blessing for us as well. So the good news is that was actually really easy to install and so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys exactly how to do it. Um, you need just some basic hand tools and it's actually a little bit concerning that the entire thing is pretty much held on by two bolts. 5,000 pound weight rating um, held on by two carriage bolts. So just make sure you tighten those bolts. All right, so the first thing you need to do obviously is order your replacement jack. So I found the best price to be eTrailer.com. And um, unfortunately these jacks, they don't sell any service kits or replacement parts for them. You actually have to buy the entire unit. So that includes the jack, uh, the jack feet, and the motor is all one unit. So I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description. Um, you can also buy them on Amazon. It's a little bit more expensive, but you'll get a much faster shipping. You get free shipping from eTrailer, but it takes a week. But if you buy them on Amazon, it's prime two day shipping. So depending on how quickly you need to get them, that might be the better option. I'll put a link down there for Amazon as well. So we got our new jack. So 5,000 pound weight rating. What they don't tell you is that 4,000 pounds is the freaking jack itself. The next thing you need to do is you need to make sure that your trailer is properly supported, okay? I still have mine hooked up to the truck. Thank goodness when our jack failed, it was connected to the truck, so it didn't fall onto the ground. But just know you need to have it properly supported because working underneath in this compartment right here, if the trailer were to fall, you will get crushed. Sorry. You all right? Am I <laughs> centered or are you drunk? Ready? Go. Meow. <laughs> 
Like I mentioned before, it's just a few basic hand tools to do this repair. So I'll go ahead and go through an inventory real quick of what I used. Um, you definitely want to have a knife or a scraper of some kind in order to scrape away the foam insulation. And then as far as wrenches, you will need a 10 millimeter wrench or socket, a half inch uh, wrench or socket, and a 9 16 wrench or socket. It'd also be helpful to have a pair of pliers as well to help loosen some of those bolts. And I'll explain more about that later. All right, and then for bonus points, it wouldn't hurt to have some locking split washers that are the same size as your main carriage bolts and some blue thread locker. So the first thing we're gonna do is disconnect the fuse so that we don't have power going to the jacks. As you can see for the ground control 3.0 unit, you actually have a 30 amp fuse for each of the jacks. So you got your left front, right front, left mid, right mid, left rear, right rear. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the right front and that'll disconnect power to this jack. Okay, now we're gonna disconnect our two electrical quick connects. All you gotta do is press down on this little plastic thing and they'll pull right apart. Now we're gonna go ahead and prep the jack to remove it and we're gonna go ahead and remove the foot first. So we pull this pin across like that and then pull it out and the foot will fall to the ground. You need to save this pin because the new one, while it comes with a new foot, it actually doesn't come with this pin. So we gotta reuse this pin. So hold on to it, set it aside for now. Now we're gonna remove the pull pin system for dropping your jacks manually. And that's just these two 10 millimeter carriage bolts right here. So use your 10 millimeter socket or wrench. And again, set all this hardware aside because the new unit doesn't actually come with this piece that you need. And uh, as soon as you pull this side out, that's gonna wanna drop freely. Now, I do not have enough room because I'm hitched up to my truck to pull this out all the way from the bottom. So I'm gonna shove it back up in there and I'm actually gonna use one of these bolts to hold it in place because when it comes time to pull the jack out, we're gonna be pulling it out through the compartment because there's not enough room for this to go down through the hole. So I'm just shoving that back through in there temporarily just to support that. All right, so the next thing I did when I was doing my other jack was I removed the motor, but I actually, in hindsight, think that that's probably not necessary. So I'm gonna attempt to leave the motor in place while I remove this unit. So this entire jack unit is actually held in place by just these two carriage bolts right here. So we'll go ahead and undo those. And again, save the carriage bolts because they are not included with the replacement. So you will have to reuse your carriage bolts. All right, so as you can see, this carriage bolt right here is surrounded by this nasty foam sealant. So that's why you wanna have um, a knife or a scraper because we're gonna scrape all that away. And don't worry, we can replace that later. Uh, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and just unbury this bolt. And as you can see, there's not enough room to get a socket down in there. So this is an instance where you actually do need to just suffer through using an actual wrench. There we go. So can you believe the entire weight that these jacks support are held on by just two carriage bolts and the nut, not even a locking nut, okay? This is just a regular nut. So uh, that's why I said bonus points. Me, whenever I'm fixing something on my rig, I like to fix it better than it was originally designed. So in this instance, it's a really cheap but effective repair to just do a little split uh, locking washer that fits the carriage bolt and then I'm also gonna put a couple of drops of blue Loctite on there when I mount up my new jack, just to ensure that these bolts will never come loose unless I want them to with a wrench. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this other carriage bolt and we'll see if we actually need to remove the motor or not, but I suspect not. There we go. There we go. Oh gosh, dang. Oh, 4,000 pounds. Confessions. One, two. 75, 100. Okay, what was I doing again? I'm seriously out of breath from that. That was stupid. Why, why do you let me do those stupid You're things? You're really so much. I really am. You seriously have no idea how heavy those things are. 100 reps, 4,000 pounds, no problem. Okay, once I catch my breath, we'll put the new one back in. Okay, so to prep the jack ready for install, what I'm gonna do first is pull the jack, but we got our inside piece that is gonna fall out as soon as we tip it upside down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hold that thing in place with that same uh, 10 millimeter carriage bolt I pulled off earlier, just so that when it comes time to do this, that doesn't slide down and land in the dirt. I'm still out of breath from doing those curls with this thing. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> these things are no joke. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the motor. Um, the reason why I didn't uninstall the other motor was because uninstalling it and installing it with the jack attached is really difficult because 
you have to put a bolt in on both sides of the jack, okay? Now, the problem with that is that um, one of the sides is up against the wall and it's where you won't be able to see it. So you're kind of just blindly sticking your wrench back in there, hoping that you can um, hit the bolt and get it where you need it. So to install the motor, you just need to make sure that this connection lines up with that connection and that your motor is actually facing the correct direction, okay? Because um, the motor faces towards the rear of the coach. There we go, and that locked up good. Um, and then you want to make sure that your pinholes are gonna be on the side. So I'm gonna put that in there and then there should be two bolts supplied, but then you'll just stick these bolts in and there's, um, you just thread it up onto the actual jack. So this is where you need that half inch wrench or socket to tighten these up good. So these jacks actually have two little humps that they um, pry out of the sheet metal right there. That's really just to hold these in place while you connect your main brackets. Um, one's gonna sit on top of this bracket. The other one's gonna sit right underneath that bracket. And I imagine this one helps kind of share some of the load once the coach starts pressing into this jack it rests on that sheet metal a little bit. But the real heavy lifting is done by those carriage bolts. So as we go ahead and slide this in, we're gonna make sure that these two fit right below and above the two main brackets. This just slides in right like that. And using your super strong, amazing dad strength, set it up in there. Now we'll go ahead and put one of these carriage bolts loosely in place. All right, so we got our two carriage bolts in. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just put on a drop of this blue Loctite. On both. And then put on our split washers and our nuts. My 916 wrench. I wish I could put a socket in there, but I can't. Go ahead and attach our new foot. Okay, now I can pull this guy out and go ahead and put our landing leg quick connect bracket back on. I apologize guys, I thought I had a lot more daylight than I actually had to film this video. But I gotta get this done so we can get back on the road. Alright. Alright, that seems that's work. About as good as it did before. Perfect. Okay, and now we can attach our new foot. So nice of them to include a brand new foot, but not a quick connect for it. I guess they assume if you're buying this part that you're not building a new RV, you're just replacing ones on your current RV. Cause that's stupid. They don't include half the crap that you need to finish the job. All right. Okay. All right, so last thing, we're gonna go ahead and reconnect our quick connects. And these were, zip tied to the motor like that. So I will probably go back with a zip tie and zip those up just for a little bit cleaner connection. And then we have to replace our 30 amp fuse. Time to test it out, make sure it works. All right, they go down? Yep. All right, let's see if they go up. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is seal up where we have um, scraped away the old sealant. So this is called Great Stuff for gaps and cracks. It's just a insulating foam sealant. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and do this because um, my truck blows a lot more black smoke than I would like, and I don't want any diesel soot coming up into this um, storage compartment. So we're gonna go ahead and seal this off. This stuff you just apply liberally and it will expand and it should be should be coming out the bottom. Let's go ahead and check the bottom, make sure it's coming out the bottom. So you can see it is starting to come out the bottom. I am gonna put a little bit more on the bottom here just to make sure we get a good tight seal. 
Um, but once this stuff, this stuff will just continue to expand and expand and expand until it dries. And then you can just cut away the excess with a razor blade, uh, like I showed you earlier. All right, yesterday, obviously, we ran out of daylight to complete our full test. So today, we're gonna complete the full test by making sure that the front jacks can actually support the weight of the entire trailer loaded up. So we got the truck on and warming up. Now we're gonna drop down those front jacks and detach it from the truck, make sure it can support the weight, and then also make sure that it can still push the trailer up so that we can get level. All right, success. We were able to detach the truck. It's supporting the weight just fine. We were able to bring the unit up um, so that it's level. So all the weight of the unit is just being supported by those front jacks and the axle. So now the last thing to do is to reset the zero calibration. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. All right, so in your one control touch menu, select leveling, and then we're gonna go to manual mode and hit enter. And as you can see, I already manually leveled it so that I am level side to side, front and rear, and then also level front to rear. Um, the unfortunate thing is that when I test with my actual level, I'm a little bit off. So I'm gonna re-zero this thing based on what a real level is telling me. So as you can see, I have used this level all around the entire RV and you can see that bubble is just slowly sitting over there to the right-hand side. So we need to raise up the left-hand side just a tad. And then what I've also noticed is that front to back, it's showing that the front is um, slightly higher. So we're actually gonna have to lower the front ever so slightly as well. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is um, set my level front to rear. So because in order to do side to side, I'm gonna have to drop the rear jacks, but I don't wanna drop the rear jacks until we are level front to rear. So I'm going to select retract because we want the front end to come down a little bit. And then I'm gonna press on front and I'm gonna do this probably until I get minus, I don't know, 0.3 degrees. All right, so now let's double check with our level. All right, and that looks absolutely perfect. I'm just gonna double check in a few other spots around the RV, but I'm pretty sure that gets us where we want. Okay, as you can see, I ended up putting it back on negative 0.2, because as I checked other spots around the RV, that seemed like it was more the happy medium between level across the entire surface of the whole RV. So now we're gonna um, extend our rear jacks till they hit the ground. So I'm gonna hit extend and then bring down the rears. Okay, so the rear jacks have hit the ground. And as you can see, side to side in the rear, we're at minus 0.2. Okay, so that actually means that my right rear needs to be extended. So in order to do that, you hit right and rear at the same time. All right, so now you can see, well, now we're saying plus one, but that's close enough. We're gonna check with the level now. Are we level side to side in both the front and in the rear? And if we need to, we can extend each one of the four jacks individually um, just by hitting extend or retract and then hitting front right, front left, right rear, right left. Okay, so according to my actual level, not this, it's telling me that my left side needs to come up all over, front and back. So we're on extend and we're just gonna hit left. And we'll probably go maybe 0.2 degrees. Okay, so despite what all these numbers say, which is really screwy, I double checked with my level everywhere around my rig and I found this to be the happiest medium in every spot for completely level side to side in the front, side to side in the rear, and then also front to rear. So to re-zero it, we're gonna go back and hit options. It's gonna tell you that this is an advanced feature. Do you wanna continue? Click yes, collect, or select <laughs> yes. It says setup, zero mode, press enter. Now hold very still when it after you press enter to set the zero point cal calibration. Zero point set. So now we should be able to do our auto level, our auto hitch, auto retract. It should be able to do all that based on the zero point that we just set right here. So just out of curiosity, I think if you go to manual mode, it should have zeroed everything out. Yep, there we go. So now we're zero everywhere. All right, so that's everything you need to do step-by-step, step, start to finish to replace your front jacks on your 
Lippert system or Lippert systems ground control 3.0 system as you can see the hardest part really is resetting your zero That's the most tedious. You're just gonna be running around your rig with a level back and forth um, If you like this video go ahead and hit a like and subscribe if you want to see our family's adventures on the road full-time RV family um, I'm Dan you're watching rock and rollin remember life rocks when your home rolls